Hi everyone, this tutorial is for those of you who want to edit and organise your photos using Lightroom but don't know where to start. You might have previously used some kind of free photo editing software and as your library has grown you want to upgrade to a more capable application that can handle all your day-to-day -day needs. You've heard that Lightroom is the software to use but when you've tried to use it you've been confused by talk of the catalogue the need to import your photos and the absence of that familiar save button. The reason that people new to Lightroom struggle at first to understand it is that Lightroom works in a completely different way to say Photoshop, PaintShop Pro or just about any other photo editor you've been used to. Let's first review what happens when you edit a photo using a conventional editor. The photo file is stored in a folder either on your computer's internal hard drive or, because photos can take up a lot of space, on an external USB drive that's dedicated to holding just your photos. In either case, you have to navigate to the folder and then find the photo you want to edit. If you have hundreds or thousands of photos, finding a specific photo can become like looking for the proverbial needle in a haystack. To help locate photos, most people make subfolders and give them names that indicate the kind of photos they contain. For example, holiday locations, landscape or wildlife. The idea here is to make a lot of descriptive folders that each contain a manageable number of photos. While this helps, this folder structure also presents some problems. If you take a landscape photo while on holiday, do you put it in the holidays folder or the landscape folder? I hope you wouldn't consider putting the same photo in both folders as this would take up unnecessary disk space and create loads of confusion later on. We'll see how Lightroom deals with folders later but for now let's suppose we've opened a folder that contains a few dozen photos and opened one of them in our conventional editor. Here I've taken a colour image and processed it to make a sepia version. I now have to save my work. If I simply hit the save button I will overwrite the original coloured version with my sepia version and in this case it's a matter of once saved always saved. There's no way to undo this action not even using the recycle bin. If I wanted to keep the original coloured version and also save my edited version I'd need to save as and use a new file name. I'd then end up with two versions of the same photo taking up more space on my hard drive. As you've probably guessed, Lightroom can solve this problem as well. So let's now look at what happens if we try to edit the same photo in Lightroom. Before we get into editing the Lightroom way, I want to explain a core concept by taking a trip to an imaginary art gallery. Let's suppose this gallery is putting on a new exhibition of photos. They obviously have to keep track of which room in the gallery they hang each photo, so as each new photo is hung in position, its details are written on one of those old-fashioned card index systems. Each card can feature a small thumbnail image of the real photo, together with information on which room in the gallery it can be found, who the photographer was, the date it was taken, the cost and any other useful information. Each of these cards can now be gathered together and put into a card index box, which might then be labelled something meaningful, such as Exhibition. This, in essence, is what a Lightroom catalogue is. In computer terms, this collection of cards is called a database, and each card in the collection is called a record. Having now assembled our catalogue of cards, there are a few points I'd like to draw to your attention, as they'll help you understand some of the operations we'll be carrying out later in the series. Firstly, since they're just cards we've filled in, any card can be copied, edited or even deleted without in any way affecting the photo to which it refers. If you do move a photo to another location, rename it or delete it, the information on the card will need to be updated or else you'll lose track of where it is. Don't think of each card as being limited to what you might be able to scribble down on a postcard. Rather think of it as a huge blank sheet of paper that can be used to record anything at all. In this simple example, we've only considered recording information that will tell us 
details about the finished photo, where it is, that kind of thing. This is all well and good if all we want to do is organise our photo collection, but we can also use these cards to record how each photo is edited. We can make copies of cards and transfer them to other catalogues so that selected photos can be worked on in other catalogues, possibly running on other computers. Or we can keep the copies in the same catalogue and record several different ways to edit the same photo. The catalogue in Lightroom is just a file ending with .lrcat and as such it can be moved, renamed, copied or deleted just like any other file. Finally, because catalogues don't actually contain the master photos but only information about them, they don't take up nearly as much space on your computer as your collection of photos does. We can now take a quick look at the Lightroom editing process. Here's a photo from the catalogue that's been selected for editing. This original photo is never changed by Lightroom. It's called the master photo to distinguish it from the little thumbnail photo that's included on the card we saw earlier. The master photo is sacrosanct, but if it's never allowed to change, how can we edit the image? Well, here's what happens. Let's assume we want to make a black and white image of this bridge. We first select it and then start making adjustments to the controls in the develop module. Instead of making changes directly to the master photo, the adjustments we make to the sliders simply cause a series of simple text instructions to be written to the photo's record in the catalogue in real time. Every time we make an edit, new instructions are added and these stored instructions are combined with a copy of the master photo to make a simulation of what the original master photo would look like if it were to be directly edited. Since all the edits are permanently stored in the catalogue as we work, there's no need to save our work and that's why Lightroom has no save button. Generally speaking, our edits exist in the catalogue and all our master photos exist outside the catalogue. This has implications for where we store and back up the catalogue and also for where we back up the master photos and I'll deal with those issues later. For now, I hope I've laid down the basic concepts in this introduction to Lightroom. In the next movie, we'll begin from scratch and make a brand new catalogue and import our first photos. If you found this tutorial useful, please like and subscribe to be notified of new material as it's available. If you're on Facebook, please take a look at the Lightroom Lab Group. And finally, thank you for watching.